webinar. And um, so what I've done is I've built a, a series of uh, steps for you to, to focus on. Some of you may already be focusing on this, but however, with the uncertainty that we've got going on in the in the world around us, uh, that you know there's may, might be some things that you're that you're missing or or the team is missing. Uh, the other thing I'd like to remind everybody of is um, I'm, I'm very, very open to questions all the way through this. So you know, just use the chat box and, and fire in your questions and then, um, you know, I'll be interrupted as we go and and uh, and um, we, we can deal with those questions. And I prefer to have the questions when we're on those they're on a particular slide so that we can use that. Um, so without further ado, let's let's get into strategic playbooking for uncertain times. And um, I've divided it into three sections for you today. And the first section is manning the lifeboats. And, and, and I really want to focus on the fact that this isn't because your ship is going down. Um, this is because you are preparing for opportunities that are um, right there, you know, potentially in front of you. And I know as a tech chair, some of my tech members are taking advantage of opportunities that are in front of them. And I've got a couple of tech members who are actually um, basically businesses shut down because they have no revenue coming in. So we're also looking at, uh, you know, how is it that we keep them alive and and uh, through our tagger teams that we put together, we are uh, coming up with some really cool opportunities for them. So uh, let's get into this first section here. And the first section really I wanted to focus on because uh, it, whether you're a CEO, whether you're general manager, president, or, or an executive inside your organization, there is really only four things that we need to be looking at. And, uh, my very first CEO job that I had, I think it was Monday morning for day one, and I uh, was sitting there and about, about 8.30, I, I phoned to, uh, the chair of the organization. I said, what is it I'm supposed to be doing? Um, and, and he kind of laughed at me a little bit, but then uh, he, he said, there's really only four things. Uh, and he called them the three ups and the one down. And the one thing that I wanted to focus on from this slide is that during uncertain times like we're in right now, the natural response for every leader is to focus on optimizing the cost inside the organization, which we have to do. We have to, con we have to understand our burn rate and we have to be able to uh, pull levers to control the burn rate. And a lot of organizations throughout the, throughout the country are doing that now. During uncertain times, though, I also want to emphasize that our jobs as leaders is to make sure that we're focusing on the three ups as well. So how, how can we drive revenue into the organization? And I'll, um, I've got a couple of slides coming up here which will uh, explain you know, more about that. Uh, the second one is how do we continue to drive employee engagement? And our second section that we're going to talk about today is really all about how do we keep our team engaged uh, when, you know, in their world, it, it might be falling apart all around them. And then the third one is, is that how do we keep our customers engaged? And a lot of organizations that I deal with as a strategist um, are very, very good at getting customers to what I call trial purchase. Uh, however, they're not so good at driving customers all the way through the buying cycle to a point where customers become what I call apostles and they will never, ever leave you. And in fact, they, they, they support you and find ways to support you uh, during uncertain times. So well, that's, that's what I'd like you guys to continuously focus on. Um, and then I've prepared this handy little slide for you. And, it, and the slide deck is available to everyone afterwards. And I'll make it available to the tech office. And uh, they'll probably po post it on the portal or I, I don't know how it's going to be distributed. But um, focusing your entire team on the three ups and the one down and it just helps simplify things as well so the first part of that focus in terms of the three ups is really looking at your strategic compass now some of you that are on the call here today uh, will have heard me speak and deliver the strategy session that i've done across the country um, and this is one of the tools that i use in the simple strategy simply said section or uh, workshop that I deliver, and it is all about positioning your strategic excellence, but keeping an eye on your culture of your strategic excellence. And I added in the, uh, the paragraph text that's in each section, so what does your culture look like? And this is really, really important during uncertain times is to make sure that you are positioning your company uh, for growth or stability 
by also focusing on what is it that your culture is naturally able to deliver. Um, so I'll just quickly go around the compass here. Customer experience, I'll start in the north position. It's really all about a culture that is flexible in terms of your processes and it's interdependent. So in other words, the, the team, the organization's culture is much like a basketball team or a hockey team where as you move towards the goal or the net or the basket, you as a team rely on each other. Everybody has an integral job uh, and, it's, and it's connected throughout the organization. Um, and your processes, as, as I've said, are flexible. It's a culture that's typically of caring, higher purpose environments, a warm, collaborative, welcoming. Uh, I mean, people support each other. Let's go to the east position of the compass. And these are organizations that focus on delivering a strategic excellence to customers that's based on quality. That's a typical culture of planning and caution and preparedness and environments are very methodical. Um, so the culture is also very interdependent like a hockey team or a basketball team. However, the processes are more stable. And Henry Ford said it best once when uh, he said, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. And these are organizations that have a very, very process driven in order to maintain their level of quality. As we work our way around the compass, it's also really important to remember that organizations that are doing really well in uncertain times and in time to when, it's, when times are good is that they focus a particular strategic greatness in their organization. However, they also remain, remain good at the other points on the compass. Uh, it is, this model is built upon, you can't be all things to all people. So let's look at the south position, which is operational efficiency. And these are cultures that are typically uh, very decisive, the results orientated, and it's all about winning environments are outcome oriented and merit based. Uh, those organizations are very, very stable in terms of their processes, very process driven, very replicable in terms of their structure. Yet the teams and the culture operates more independently. So it's much like a golfer or a tennis player um, when when they're out there performing and they, they perform as individuals and as a group of individuals, the organization wins. And then the final one on the compass is innovation. And it's a typical culture of exploration, expansiveness and creativity. Uh, these these organizations have a pros or have a culture that's very flexible, but also interdependent. So your organization will fit in one of these places. And I think it's, it's really important to highlight that we as leaders in the organization need to make sure that we are sticking to our greatness and our greatness is tied to our culture. And the culture is able to deliver that greatness. You still need to be good at the other three points, but there is a reason why customers buy from you. And we need to make sure that even during uncertain times that we are stay, staying true to that because we can't change our stripes. The next slide that I want to focus on is a Venn diagram. And, and again, some of you who have heard me speak who have seen this. Um, and this is just a simple three circle Venn diagram where up on the right hand side, we have the total customer market that is available. Down at the bottom the circle represents your organization. And then in the, uh, I guess it's the 10 o'clock position, that circle represents your competitors. And when we overlay them, there's a bunch of intersections that I want to highlight here. Uh, and the first one that I want to highlight is this one right here. Your competitor has an advantage over you in the marketplace. Uh, there's something that they do. And if we went back to the compass, your organization might be totally focused on customer experience. For example, your competitor might be delivering efficiency as their greatness. So in other words, their price is better than yours. So they, they own a piece of the marketplace. Uh, there's this kind of weird place that happens right here when we're in uncertain times like we are right now. We tend to take our eye off of the market and what the market needs, and we start focusing on our competitors. And meanwhile, our competitors are focusing on us. And it creates this kind of weird place where it doesn't deliver any value to the marketplace at all, yet we're busy trying to produce or develop something because our competitors are doing it. Likewise, they're develop, developing it because we're doing it. There's this place right in here in the, in the middle where all the circles intersect. And this is where the 
marketplace cannot see any differentiated value between your your organization and your competitor's organization. And this just drives price and cost discussions. I call this spot right here, your secret sauce. This is what you do better than anybody else. Your culture is designed or has you know, accidentally been designed uh, to deliver value in this spot. And this is where the marketplace sees value from your organization. During uncertain times, it's really, really important for us to focus in on what is it that we do? What is our secret sauce? And there's a piece of the marketplace that sees value in that. So you're not going to be in the trenches slogging it out every single day with everybody else. It makes it easier for your organization to, um, you know, to fight and win. The last piece here, and during uncertain times, we have to do some things that are a little bit different for us as an organization. However, I want to make sure that I highlight the fact that we need to be looking adjacently. So again, we can't change our stripes. Uh, it's very, very difficult to do that in an organization. So strategically, we have to you know, understand what is it that makes us who we are and how do we then move adjacently? So I'll give you an example. This is the real world example that happened last week. One of my tech members runs an organization of uh, dental practices. He's got a bunch of de dental practices in the greater Vancouver area. And I don't know about the rest of the country, but here in British Columbia, dental practices are shut down. Um, until they can prove that they have an environment where uh, the dental staff is safe and the patient is safe, uh, they're not allowed to operate. And the big issue that dental practices have is aerosols. So when a dentist is working in a patient's mouth, uh, they will create aerosols that come out of the patient's mouth. And those aerosols have to be captured in order to create a safe environment for the dental team as well as the patient. Um, so my tech member basically shut down. And one of the things that we pulled together was uh, other tech members within the greater Vancouver area, and we posed the challenge to them. And in my, on Monday of last week, this is what they came up with. And in uncertain times, one of the things to keep in mind is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, General George Patton in the end of the Second World War he was famous for saying that uh, a good plan executed today is better than a perfect plan executed tomorrow. So this was on Monday and they came up with this sort of sketch drawing about what it would look like. And the next day, it looked like this. Um, and they're into production of it now. And what we're here looking at is a ceiling mounted air handling system that has medical grade HEPA filters in it. And these tubes coming down are flex tubes that are able to position in front of and off to the side of a patient's mouth. Uh, and with a high volume vacuum, it sucks any air that's happening in and around the patient's mouth into the system through the HEPA filter and then out. Um, out through back into the room uh, after it's been thoroughly um, uh, scrubbed, I guess, of any pathogens. This is what happens in uncertain times. The dental team and the team of people that came together, you know, as a partnership to work through this, stuck to what it is that they're good at, and they moved into an adjacent area. And within a matter of days, now they're going to be back in business. The side part of this is that now they've created a product that can be deployed into medical practices, not just dental, but medical practices everywhere in order to create the safety. And, and I want to I want to do I want to use the word safety. I mean, there's not only physical safety, but psychological safety during uncertain times. And I'm going to talk about that more in section two. When we are working through things as well, in terms of moving adjacently and, and looking at what it is that we can do to take advantage of opportunities that are out there right now, uh, we also have to make sure that we are in total alignment with the values of the organization, your purpose or your cause, and I'm gonna talk more about that in, in a few minutes, and the vision that you've got. Now, typically as a strategist, I like to say, well, we, we need to look at like a three-year vision. Uh, during uncertain times, you might have a one-month vision. Whatever that happens to be, your team needs to understand that the safe, 
not psychologically as well as physically, that there's a purpose or a cause that they're working towards, and that there's a mountaintop that they're all moving towards climbing. Then once we have that firmly just, you know, figured out, then, and by, and by the way, I use the term firmly, loosely, during uncertain times, we also have to make sure that it ties in with our people, our public image or our brand, our performance, our planning, our prioritization and product or production. So I just put this slide up here just to, as a checkpoint for us to make sure that we've got working in total alignment with this. And if you go back two slides, remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. The second section that I want to work and talk about today is, is keeping the lights on. And, and when I say keeping the lights on, I am referring to keeping the lights on with our employee base and the team of people that you're working with and all the stakeholders, keeping them engaged, keeping them motivated and inspired. And I really want to focus in on you know, some key points that we as leaders need to make sure that we are highlighting and bringing to life every single day with our team. Um, the first one is just a reminder slide. And Peter Drucker at one point in time said, a culture eats strategy for breakfast. And as a strategist and a culture, um, a culturist, I guess I call, would call myself, I see this every day, that culture eats everything for breakfast. And it's really, really important. When I left business school, I didn't think I'd ever have to look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs ever again. Boy, was I wrong. Um, and one of the things I've discovered in looking at cultures and strategy and how do we get the two of them blended together was that in great organizations, uh, the team just naturally moves through Maslow's hierarchy of needs up to self-esteem and self-actualization in some cases. When times are good, that just naturally happens. When times are uncertain though, we as human beings go back to our lizard brains and we start to move back down high Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So right now with everything that's going on in Canada uh, and the world around us, we're seeing teams of people who are moving down and in a lot of organizations that I'm working with right now, I'm seeing that they've moved down into safety and security and psychological needs. So down into the orange and red zones. And it's natural for human beings. When human beings don't understand what's going on and that they, they're confused and potentially scared, there's a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt, especially with social media and the mainstream media creating this FUD or fear, uncertainty and doubt. We go right back down to the bottom of Basil's hierarchy of needs. And you just see it every time you go to the grocery store. I don't understand this whole thing about toilet paper. I just don't get it at all. But it's people who are responding from a psychological need um, point of view, where they're completely concerned with you know, the, the, the bottom basics of, of human behavior. And it's got everything to do with this. And I'm going to use the brain in terms of this model. Uh, our brain is way more complicated than this, but I'm a simple guy. And the psychology that's going on right now has got everything to do with this, the right brain and the left brain. Well, the right brain is our limbic system. It's our lizard brain. It's our oldest brain. And it is the part of our brain that's completely and totally concerned about safety, both psychologically and physically. Well, it was originally designed to keep us physically safe from things that could eat us. Well, these days, it's more concerned about psychological safety but we're also starting to see physical safety needs kicking in again you just have to go to your local grocery store and you see people wearing homemade masks scarves wrapped around their face uh, and it's happened it's all happening right here in the right brain or our limbic system where we're concerned about that safety element the unfortunate part is that this part of our brain never never matures beyond the level of a five-year-old. Um, so you're seeing a lot of irrational, emotional behavior coming out of people during uncertain times. That fear, that uncertainty and doubt is happening amongst your team. And it's our job as leaders to make sure that we are doing everything that we can to create an environment for them where they feel safe, where they feel that you have a plan, you have direction, and there's a cause for them to work towards that is going to help create the physical say or the, um, the the safety part of it both physically as well as psychologically or emotionally 
This part of our brain, though, as well, that right brain, the limbic brain, we have to remember that the emotional brain thinks faster than a rational brain does. The rational brain is on the left, but our emotional brain thinks faster, and it will set up context for our rational brain. And the best example I can use is that if you go down to the United States, you'll see about 50% of the population who absolutely loves Donald Trump and wants to have his baby. And there's about 50% of the population who thinks that he's the worst thing that's ever happened. But you will never be able to convince one side that their, their position is wrong because they've made an emotional decision around it and it's set up context for a bias in their rational brain. Now, let's take it back to Canada and people going back into the grocery stores and they're thinking that everything is going to be okay. And then they turn with their shopping cart down the aisle where paper towels and toilet paper is and the shelves are empty. Their emotional brain has already set up this bias that we're in a crisis, if you will, in air quotes. And as soon as they see empty shelves, that's the context that they need or the bias that they need from their rational brain to be able to go like, yep, see, I told you, we're in this massive crisis right now. What we need to do as leaders is to give them that cause, give them a purpose. And, and that all starts with some real basic things that we can do as leaders. It starts here in the rational brain, that left brain is where all of our analytics happen. And it's, you know, it's, we have to bring this level of intelligence back into the culture. Um, and, you know, one of the key ways to do that is to recognize what's going on. Now, here's a brain scan showing electrical activity. And this is, happens to be the very same person, by the way. The scan on the right is somebody who's responding emotionally. Um, and the, our left brain, which is our newest brain, the neo, neocortex, happens to be up around the top part. So if you're looking at the right-hand scan, the very top part of it, and this kind of light blue, is our rational or logical brain. Well, in this scan, the person's responding emotionally, and the rational brain has actually come offline. Now, over on the left-hand brain scan, it's the same person, but the a scenario that they're responding to right now happens to be one where they understand the, the purpose, they understand the why, uh, and once the why is understood, then they, are more, they, they behave more rationally, and the entire brain is online and working as it should be. So how do we get there? How do we create that psychological safety with your team where your team is then able to stay connected even though it's parts of your team or maybe all of your team is working remotely um, is by creating this environment for them where they feel that there is this, there is some control, there's some, some stability in their life, uh, that there's leaders that they can trust within their organization. Um, now is more important than ever to follow Richard Branson's line where your clients don't come first, even though that's incredibly important. It's one of our three ups. Your team comes first. Um, we have to make sure that their psychological needs are taken care of so that they will take care of our clients. Well, there's a simple chart here, and it comes from the Gallup study in 2015, where Gallup studied over uh, 70 large organizations in North America. And what they found was that on the left-hand side, organizations that had a high level of engagement versus the right-hand side in red, organizations that had a low level of engagement. The difference was that their leaders were out being very, very active, connecting and being with their people. Now, if your team is working remotely, like a lot of organizations are these days in Canada, we have to make sure as leaders and the leaders that work with us are being very, very present and out talking with their people through applications like we're on today, be it Zoom, be it text, be it email, be it video from a handheld iPhone, that they're talking about what's going on in the business. They're talking about them encouraging, still taking the opportunities to encourage development, sending them information, educational information, and tech is sending out uh, data on a daily basis, and your chair is probably sending you data on a daily basis about what's going on and what are some of the things you can do as a leader. Passing that on to your team, making sure that they understand that, you, that we're looking for ways to grow and that we care about them. All the way down here, you can still do that. Here's the other thing I want to highlight when it's building a strategy for challenging times. 
is that pay attention to your values inside your organization. The values are your base foundation for your culture. And what we're paying attention to and bringing our highest level values to life every single day, then you will find that you will have more commitment and motivation from your team, even if they're working remotely. When we as leaders are running around uh, thinking that the sky is falling and we're not staying true to our values, we're not living them and bringing them to life every single day, then you're going to have a mixed group of values in terms of priority, high and low. If you see your team all of a sudden has no motivation and no commitment, it's probably because the values haven't been brought to life and highlighted. You're not catching people living in those values and bringing it to life every single day. So here's the question that I have for you, and nobody needs to answer this right now, but what I'd like you to do is take these series of questions, three of them, and ask yourself, you know, it's one of those look in the mirror questions, and then ask yourself in terms of your team. Um, are your values that you have inside your organization core? That means you live them every day. Aspirational, which means that you'd like the values to be this way, or are they accidental? Um, Question number two is, are your values shared amongst all your employees or merely just artifacts posted on the wall, maybe behind the reception desk? Uh, this is really, really key for you. And right now when you're working with your team, and again, I keep, I keep highlighting that your team, part of them or all of them could be remote. You still need to be bringing their values to life. And then are the employees and more importantly, the leaders in your organization held accountable for living the company's values? During uncertain times, this is the time more than ever that we have to stay true to our values. Here's the big thing, though, that's going to drive a cause inside your organization and get, be this rallying point or rallying cry, and it's creating a purpose. I love this picture of a lighthouse, and I, and I love throwing the picture up and asking leaders, what is the purpose of a lighthouse? Now, I won't get a three paragraph war and peace description of a lighthouse. Often what I will get is something really, really simple and somebody will say, well, the purpose is communication or navigation, keeping people safe or keeping ships off of rocks. Those are some of the common things that I hear. They're all absolutely right. And it's, a, and it's the why we have lighthouses on the coast all over in Canada and around the world. Nobody ever talks about the what. Nobody ever talks about the fact that there's this light at the top that puts out about 2 million lumens and it rotates around at a certain speed. And, you know, that, that the whole lighthouse operation costs a million dollars a year to run. That there's this sweet old couple that live in the house at the bottom. Nobody ever says that. It's very clear. This is the purpose. And it's during these times, these uncertain times right now, that you as a leader need to create this purpose. You need to create a lighthouse purpose for your team, even if it's a short-term one. And this lighthouse purpose is all designed around communication, navigation, keeping people safe, because that's what they need more than anything right now. I love this example. This is an example from Johnson & Johnson. This is their credo or their purpose on the right-hand side. And this is over 100 years old. And they say that their credo or their cause, their purpose, we believe our first responsibility is to patients, doctors, and nurses, to mothers and fathers, and all others who use our products and services. Well, they put this purpose to test during uncertain times for them, which was September 1982, when in Chicago, somebody who they had never caught decided to lace some Tylenol bottles with cyanide. Well, seven people passed away as a result of that in taking uh, contaminated Tylenol. Well, Tylenol, when the Johnson & Johnson executives looked at their credo, their purpose, their cause, and the first thing that they did was they pulled $100 million worth of Tylenol product in 1982 off the shelves worldwide. Against the recommendations of the FBI and the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S., they pulled all of them off the shelf. And within six weeks, they had redesigned their packaging and their bottles and created the very first tamper-proof packaging for bottles, which is now standard for everything that we see in uh, drugstores, grocery stores, anything that's uh, where there's either pain medication, aspirin, Tylenol, even vitamins, all have tamper-proof packaging because of this. 
But more importantly, within three months, Tylenol was back on the shelf and their sales were back to where they were pre-crisis in Chicago. And I often ask, where would Boeing be today if they had lived their purpose? And five years ago, when the Boeing 737 MAX 8 first hit the, the air, um, and they were hearing from pilots that there is problems with this aircraft, where would they be today with that aircraft if they had pulled it out of service right there and then, and if they had lived their purpose? So this is how powerful purpose is to your organization. You are in uncertain times right now. Your people need a cause. They need something to rally around. And your purpose, your why, is one of the most important things that you can do. I'm going to pause right here just to see if there's any questions. Are you getting any coming in? No, Bob, but I want uh, you know what? It's interesting. You know, as you're as you're looking at this Tylenol example, I see this thread that's going through because you know you had that beautiful example at the beginning about your dental practice, and bringing um, divergent leaders in in different organizations together to help solve that problem. And I'm I'm wondering what that Tylenol staff leadership meeting looked like that came up with this type of innovation that actually led to product safety which is now a gold standard. Yeah, I, I've done a lot of reading about what happened in, the, in the, the, the senior leadership team within Tylenol or within Johnson & Johnson, actually. And it was a no-brainer for them. Um, you know, they, they had this crisis unfolding, uh, and unfortunately, seven people passed away. Um, and it was a no-brainer discussion for them because the CEO, and I can't remember who his name was at the time, said, our credo, this is what we're all about. And they repeated it. And there wasn't a single person in the room who debated the fact that they should pull every sh bottle off the shelf. And we, we have to remember, this is 1982, $100 million in 1982 money. You know, that's 38 years ago. Um, that's a big decision for an organization. And it's, it's interesting, too, that, you know, like you used to say, I, uh, and the thread that I'm picking up is that the adversity that many many of the companies that people who are participating on this webinar are engaged in right now are going through probably the most challenging time in their business. And mm -hmm. maybe this is the time to to lean into that you know innovation component and say, okay, all right, we we've got product, but we can't sell. What should we be doing? Come together and and maybe be creative in that in that adverse work environment and sort of get out of like mm -hmm. you say out of that limbic brain and into that creativity you know uh, right brain left brain opposition how do we do mm -hmm. that how do we get our teams thinking more innovatively well you know one of the things is that I as a strategist again I go back to that Venn diagram and I and I, I try to not try, try as convenient excuse for not getting things done. I focus people on let's stay adjacent here. Let's make sure that we're staying true to who we are. Now, the dental example, uh, you know, he, he's out of business, five practices out of business and the, and the lease payments. And, and there's a lot of cost when, you know, in, associated with that. So we just asked the same question, what do you need in order to be back in business? Well, the answer was a negative pressure environment. Um, and so then was, so, but it was really, what I found fascinating was that my member, you know, his focus wasn't so much on the what, he was focused on the why. He said, I just want my patients and staff to feel safe. You know, he said that if somebody's got a dental emergency, well, we have to do what we have to do. But if, you know, in order to get back into day-to-day -day business and get back into the more elective things that his practices do, people have to feel safe. And that was a really, really key thing. So then when we put the word out to the tech community, and this is why I love being a tech chair, is the power of the tech community, is that was what we led with. We led with that cause. And it turned out to be a really simple solution versus a negative pressure room is a very complicated solution. But this turned out to be super simple. And um, it was really that cause that drove everybody. And I, and I saw it in the people who came together in meetings that were happening uh, last Monday and Tuesday. 
is that they were totally focused on the cause, not the engineering aspect. And Absolutely. That, yeah, and that's what drove the innovation. Right, and then, you know, you are focusing again on values, right? What's the value mm -hmm. that I, that, uh, you know, that my, my, my mission statement and my value statement is not just, like you say, something that's plastered up on the wall. It's, it's how we act, you know, how we think, which leads to behavior, which leads to action. Mm -hmm. That's exactly in, it. Yeah. Um, Bill Neal just posted in about, you know, you, you've given some perfect examples of living and being accountable to your purpose. And so I'm wondering mm -hmm. how many, how many people online right now and just type these in what are some of the key purpose uh that key purpose statements or action or values that that you are communicating out with, with your with your um with your teams right now it's a great See question people... yeah no it's a great question um you know, and it's, it's interesting, like, okay, and I go back to my dental member, um, he's got three values, three core values, and it's, it's in the acronym of TIC, which is teamwork, integrity, and communication. And I found fascinating as well as he's going through all of this was, um, you know, the teamwork was happening amongst people coming together who thought that there was nothing that they'd ever be able to do to solve a dental problem. Um, the integrity part of it and the communication part of it was was paramount and i'm just i'm just sitting in the back and as an observer to all of this and going like wow yeah um, and you know this this is how it all works jim, uh, I'll jim he Go ahead. It, you you nailed it with integrity i mean that's you know when you break the word down what does integrity really mean bob Mm -hmm. Well, it means different things to different organizations and different people. And you go to different parts of the world and integrity means something different. And uh, that's why when we bring them to life, we bring them to life with stories. Um, and, you know, for, the, for them, integrity means doing the right thing, even when people aren't looking. Doing it the right thing at the right time and being consistent about it. Um, yeah. Tim has been, Tim Heron said, you know, he is acknowledging, he's saying please and thank you. He's, he's, recognizing the you know the the tremendous adversity and the challenges that his teams are going through but he's acknowledging them as well oh and absolutely right the you know the the respect and appreciation piece is a, it's a basic human need for us all and nancy was writing in too that she, what she's looking at is she's she's again kind of okay we're here now but let's like your lighthouse example, let's shine the light beyond where we're where where we're going to be in a while. So she's preparing um, their candidates for continued business success beyond the immediate challenges. Looking for, looking, you know, again, your lighthouse example is very clear. It's like the light shines out of a single point, but its destination is in, you know, it is beyond the present moment. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, so further to that, I'll, I'll um, you know, I'll go back. I'm actually going to skip a slide. I'm going to go to this one, which is another series of questions that uh, you can ask your organization or ask yourself. Yeah, get your leadership team together. What is our purpose? Or more importantly, what is our cause? And during uncertain times, people work, will work harder towards a cause than anything else. During normal times, people will work harder for a cause than they will for their paycheck, but more than ever. And you have to look back on different crises that, you know, and, and the word crisis to me, I when I hear crisis, I think opportunity, but think back on different crises we've had. Think back to 9-11 uh, that happened 19 years ago, um, that they created this cause, and that's became this rallying point for, for you know, the United States as well as the rest of the world. Um, and take you know making sure that we that people feel safe and taking care of each other and you know the love that poured out of all of that um, you know so what story does your cause tell and what belief does it inspire so you know keeping it simple like a lighthouse but what is that belief and that belief is very powerful incredibly powerful and I'll go back a slide and tell you another story and these are some examples of company purpose statements. Now, uh, some of them will have changed during this time of uh, uncertainty. Um, 
you know, but some of them haven't, you know, I'll go right down to the very bottom one, number five, and this is from an organization based out of Vancouver and also a tech member. Um, and it's clearly it used to be called clearly contacts, but the company's just now purpose just clearly that's what it's called and they do prescription contact lenses sunglasses and eyeglasses and their purpose or their cause is better vision for everyone and this cause is incredibly powerful because of the story that's associated with it so let me tell you the story quickly for every pair of pres prescription eyeglasses that they sell online they will donate a pair of uh, prescription eyeglasses to an emerging economy and I'll use the example of India because India one, is one of the countries that they're working in. They have trained 5,000 people to give basic eye exams. They've also outfitted those 5,000 people with uh, tuk-tuks or that little three-wheeled vehicle that, uh, that, that drives around. And in that vehicle, they've got uh, basic lenses and basic uh, eyeglass frames. Thus far, they have given away 10 million pairs of eyeglasses in India. And I always go back to the CEO and the story he tells is um, quite simply, what would life be like for a 12 year old girl in India who couldn't see? What would education be like for her? And everybody says to me, you know, when I ask that question, everybody says, well, it would be non-existent and you'd be absolutely right. But now she can see what's her life like now? What's education like for her? What's the potential for her in her life? And that cause is something that when you go into the offices of Clearly or their production facility, you see people working at a higher level of commitment and motivation because they know that whether they're marketing eyeglasses for somebody who can afford it in Canada, they also know that they're making someone's life better. And that's the kind of cause, the power that we have to bring to you know, every day, but also during uncertain times. Um, and there's a one way to do that with your team. Tell them stories. Talk to them constantly. You know, bring that cause to life by telling stories. Use pictures. Find that lighthouse picture that works for you guys. Use very clear contrast. And the contrast is important because it, it engages the rational brain. And just a reminder that the limbic or our old brain creates that cognitive bias in our new brain, the neocortex. And if we can use that clear contrast, it will set up rational behavior, rational thinking, that innovation that's going to come to help you take advantage of opportunities like that. Communication is really, really key as well as we go through this. Uh, and I just want to remind everybody that communication is your playbook has got to be really simple. It's step one starts with why. Sonnet Sonic said it in his book, start with why. But it's really key because that clocks in or engages the limbic or emotional brain. Once we understand the why, we're ready to move to step two as human beings, which is the what. What is it we're going to do? What mountain do you want me to climb? What does good look like? Then it moves. We naturally move to step three, which is the how. And then naturally after that, we move to part four or step four, which is what do you need me to do? And that's the way we think as human beings. So as we, if we as leaders are communicating that way, then we're able to get our people engaged around that model as well. And it, it ties in perfectly with how people think. I want to get to the last section, which is hitting the ground running. And hitting the ground running is for today as well as, you know, I hope it's three months from now. Some people are telling me it's nine months from now, but we have to be prepared for whatever we get back to, whatever the new normal looks like for us. And how do we position our business? Not to be you know, business as usual as we used to know it, but business as usual for the future. And what does that look like? And go back to all the way, all the things that I've talked about today. And that's what we have to be planning for. Planning for next week, but we're also planning for what when we come out of this. And, and those of you who heard me speak have also heard me or seen me use this slide here. And I just want to remind, or, or remind everybody that, you know, how powerful it is in terms of what goes on in an F1 pit. And if you look at this picture, the car represents your company. It is everything that your company does. It's your systems, your processes, your product, your services. It's the machine of your business. The driver or the pilot, as they call them, an F1 is sitting in the center of the car. That's your customer. And everybody around the car is the team that's delivering that product or service for your customer. 
And however that happens to be, you can take all the slides that we've presented thus far today. And you, you know, if, if you have a clear why, you have a clear what, you have a clear how, your team now now needs to understand what role do they play. And if you look at the 24 people who are involved in this pit stop here, they're all doing something completely different, every one of them, all for the same purpose, the same vision that they have, but they're all doing something different. And when you have that clarity inside your organization around the why, the what, and the how, and if everybody understands their role, then you will have greater levels of connection and trust amongst each other. Um, I built a one-pager for everybody, and this is going to be available to you in the deck. One-pagers are very, very important for your strategic direction and allowing you to be able to communicate with your team. Um, and on this one-pager, what is your vision? During uncertain times, I kind of throw the three-year vision out the window, and I'm kind of looking at, okay, what do we need to do right now? In the next month, the next three months, the next six months, what is our vision? What is our mountain that we want to climb? And what are the three things that we have to do in order to move into that adjacent space that aligns with our culture and aligns with what we're really good at and why customers buy from us? And I know there's 150 things out there that you have to do, but what are the three most important things? So those are the three strategy boxes that are there. And I also put in this here in this space for you to put your purpose and your core values. So now you can send this out to everybody. If they're working from home, tell them to print it and stick it on the wall. You can print it out, carry it around with you. You can share it with customers. You can share it with your team. You can talk about it every chance that you get. It's bringing everything in line here. And we have to think back to the psychology that I was talking about briefly earlier in the webinar, which is what's going on in the human brain. And this parlays perfectly into checking the boxes for what's going on in the brains of the people who are following you. So this is available to you. The other thing that's available to you is, you know, through your tech chair, um, reach out to me. Uh, I would love to get on the phone and have conversations with you or introduce you to some other tech members that I know of um, that could potentially help you and solve a problem for you. So don't, don't be afraid to reach out because um, I love doing this stuff. Uh, the other template that I wanted to make available to you guys as well is uh, that, okay, what are our three key strategies over on the right in the target area? But what are the things that we're working on now? And I put Q1 through Q4, but this could be week one through week four. Um, you know, it's the case with the dental uh, practice. Uh, we put day one through day four last week. And by Thursday, we had a working prototype. So, uh, you know, it's really in terms of like, okay, what do we have to do in order to get to uh, the target place and, and deliver for us? So this template is also there. And the visual reference to it also keeps people in, uh, focused and engaged. The final slide that I have for you guys, and I really want to open it up to questions in the last 10 minutes that we've got here, is um, in times of uncertainty and in times normal, whatever normal is, you have to make sure that you've got the five boxes checked in what it is that you're doing. There has to be focus on values. If there's not, there will be mistrust. So if you're not bringing values to life every day and catching people doing right, or uh, doing things right, even if that just means quite simply saying please and thank you, like it was pointed out earlier by Tim, there'll be mistrust. Your team needs a purpose. They need a why. They need a cause. And that if you don't have that, there'll be resistance. And think about times of uncertainty as well. There'll be fear, uncertainty, and doubt about what's going on. Your team needs a what. They need a vision. They need to know what mountaintop they're climbing. Uh, and without that, there'll be confusion. And you do not want confusion at times of uncertainty because people will slide further down into the depths of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. They also need a how. Um, and the how is tied in with the strategy and the action plan. Um, without key strategies, there'll be frustration. And without action planning with roles and responsibilities defined, there'll be false starts. Well, I've talked a lot, and my tea is cold. Um, who's got questions for me? Uh, I think that's really great. In that, can you just go back to that slide again for a moment, Bob? Yep. And that, 
if you are seeing, if anyone is seeing any of these or hearing this, mistrust res, or seeing resistance and confusion, frustration, false starts, this is a great diagnostic tool for identifying what needs to be fixed right now. And I think that's a that, that's a great great tool. I mean, I saw this last time, and again, every time I I listen to this, Bob, I I learn something new. I want to let everybody know that uh, Bob's slide deck and this recording will be available on our uh, Tech Canada website, and it's under the COVID-19 Insights. There's two, when you uh, click that box on the banner, there's two drop boxes. One is resources and one is webinars. So all of the webinars will be on uh, that site, and that's where the information is, as well as the slide decks for this. So uh, if you do have questions about that, they are quiet. It must be Monday morning out there or Monday yeah. afternoon. Everyone's trying to get busy, very busy. Yeah. I do want to let everybody know that this is a short week for the webinar series, but um, in this week we have a lot of uh, power hitters. Tomorrow is going to be Paul Hunt, who's going to be talking about pricing um, in a challenging time. And on Wednesday we have NHL champion Ryan Walter, is going to be talking about leading and team leading, leading yourself. And then on Thursday, we're going to finish off with Major Mark Gasparato, who was um, awarded the Meritorious Service Medal Award for his work in leading um, engineering teams in Kandahar. So we'd, we'd love to have you all on board again. Nancy is asking about your contact information. And uh, Nancy, if you want to, um, I can help you direct direct you to your to your chair. Uh, I think Nancy is the building chair at this point too. But um, that's that's a connection that people really want. Oh, she's got it now. Okay. So that was a, co a question about reaching out to you, Bob, for some of these resources, and there's your information as well. Yeah, so, you can reach out you. to me direct or or through your chair. Uh, my email for Tech Canada is r murray m u r r a y at tech canadacom Perfect. Well, Bob, uh, I'm going to say thank you again for a very enlightening, um, a very uplifting. It's great to see that that dental practice. I know that the last time I saw it was just on the on the legal note paper, and now it's it's moved itself very quickly into a very um, interesting new medical device, which is going to be transformative, not only from yes. dental practice but probably in other areas too. Absolutely. All right, everyone. So thank you again for joining us. Um, and remember that these resources will be available on the Tech Canada website. So thanks again, Bob. Have a great week. Absolutely. Take care. Thank you. All right. Cheers.